Economic Geology and Mineral Resources of India Topic of the Lesson Ore Deposits Related to Basic and Ultra Basic Rocks Part 1 Layered Mafic Intrusions Ultramafic Volcanic Rocks and Associated Mineralization Objectives To understand Mode of Occurrence and Genesis of Orthomagmatic Deposits associated with ultramafic and mafic rocks examples of ortho magmatic deposits associated with ultramafic and mafic rocks in the world geological setting and genesis of ore deposits associated with layered igneous intrusives bushveld great dike and sudbury intrusions related to flood basalts of cratonic areas norilsk talnak and bodies emplaced in active orogenic areas Eastern Goldfield Province Introduction Ore deposits formed during fractional crystallization of magmas are designated as magmatic segregation deposits also known as orthomagmatic deposits These deposits are the direct crystallization products of magma Magmatic segregation deposits usually form in the magma chamber and thus constitute deep seated intrusive bodies However, differentiated or immiscible melts and crystal moshes can be driven into the walls or roofs of the magma chamber to form ore bodies in the form of dikes, sills and even extrusive flows. Mode of occurrence A magmatic segregation deposit may occur in any of the following forms. Constitute an entire intrusive body. Form a single compositional layer within the igneous rock body may be defined by the presence of disseminated minerals. The ore minerals may be early or late fractionation products concentrated by gravitative settlings of crystals or liquids, liquid immiscibility, separation and coexistence of oxide and or sulphide liquid and silicate melt prior to their crystallization or filter pressing. They may remain in place or be injected as an or magma into previously solidified pluton or surrounding country rocks. List of orthomagmatic deposits. Table 1 shows major table orthomagmatic deposits of chromium, plutonium, titanium iron and copper nickel iron associated with basic and ultra basic rocks emplaced in cratonic and octave orogenic settings. Class A bodies emplaced in cratons. Largely stratiform layered complexes. Bushveld, South Africa, Stillwater, Montana, USA, Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, Great Dyke, Zimbabwe, Jimberlana, Western Australia. Intrusions related flood basalt and associated with rifting. Duluth, Minnesota, USA, Norilsk, Talnak, Russia, Dufek Complex, Antarctica, Inziswa, Injeli Complex, South Africa, Palisade Sill, New Jersey, USA. Medium and small sized intrusions associated with rifted plate margins and ocean basins. Commartitic Cape Smith, Quebec, Canada, Thompson Bit, Manitoba, USA, Largely Gabroic, Chemic Oilisma Belt, Finland, Scargot, Greenland, Rum, Scotland, UK. Class B Bodies emplaced in active orogenic areas. Bodies contemporaneous with plate margin volcanism largely restricted to Archean greenstone belts. Theolitic suit, Picritic subtype, Dandonol sill, Ontario, Canada, Eastern Goldfields Province, Western Australia, Pechanga, Russia, Lynn Lake, Manitoba, USA, Carboid, Western Australia. Comatitic suit, Lava flows, Munro Township, Ontario, Canada, Eastern Goldfields Province, Western Australia, Shangani Inyati Damba, Zimbabwe, Marbridge, Quebec, Canada, Dunite Lenses, Eastern Goldfield Province, Western Australia, Thompson Nickel Belt, Manitoba, USA, Dumont, Ungawa, Quebec, Canada. Major Orthomagmatic Deposits The following sections deal with some ore deposits associated with layered igneous intrusives, Bushwell, Great Dyke, and Sudbury, intrusions related to flood basalts of cratonic areas. Norilsk, Talnak and bodies emplaced in active orogenic areas, Eastern Goldfield Province. Bushwell Complex, South Africa. Bushwell Complex is large, 
measuring 375 km east west by 300 km north south it covers an area of 67000 square kilometers at the present levels of exposure as shown in figure 1 Figure one shows a sketch map of the Bushwell complex after Van Gruenwald, 1977. Evolution of Bushwell complex. The sequence of events involved in the evolution of the Bushwell complex is as follows: deposition of the early Proterozoic Transvaal supergroup sedimentary and volcanic rocks, injection of diabase sills into uppermost Pretoria group of the Transvaal supergroup sedimentary rocks, extrusion of epicrustal Ruiberg felsites and granophyres intrusion of main plutonic phase and formation of layered ultramafic mafic and intermediate rocks along with concordant layers of chromite platinum rich sulfides and titaniferous and vanadiferous magnetite and intrusion of late felsic plutonic phase represented by the red granite mode of occurrence layered intrusion occurs as a quadrilobed body and exposed mainly near the eastern northern and western boundaries of the bushwell complex near the southern boundary of the complex the southern lobe of the layered intrusion has a limited exposure and seems to be barren as no ore bearing layers have been reported so far it is not known whether each of the lobes of the layered intrusion represents a separate but contemporaneous co-magmatic intrusion it is also not known whether the lobes are interconnected genesis duke 1983 and van gruenwald et al 1985 consider that the enormously differentiated igneous intrusion of the bushwell complex has resulted from the repeated intrusion of two main magma types into partly overlapping conical intrusions that eventually coalesced into three large magma chambers corresponding to the eastern northern and western lobes according to gilbert and park 1986 the four lobes of the layered intrusion represent centers of contemporaneous magmatic activity and in chemical communication there is strong similarity between the layers of the eastern and western lobes and the two ore layers merinsky reef and ug1 chromite layer are present in both lobes and exhibit similar features similarities are less well developed in the northern and southern lobes In a vertical section the layered intrusion of the eastern lobe is funnel shaped with the layers dipping gently towards the center as shown in figure 2 figure 2 shows a section across the eastern norite belt of the bushwell complex the unperton unit is the transvaal supergroup it includes daspert and magaliesberg quartzites which are prominently outcropping marker beds in the flow rocks The eastern lobe is made up of approximately 7.8 km thick rock layers with several layers of chromite and magnetite and a couple of sulfidic layers. Cameroon 1978 and earlier workers divided the stratigraphic units into a few intervals as shown in figure 3 and designated them as lower zone 1450 meter thick critical zone 1430 meter thick main zone 2780 meter thick and upper zone 1430 meter thick the lower zone consists of six rock layers and critical zone is made up of 15 rock layers the rock layers include bronzeite feldspathic bronzeite horsbergite norite gabbro and anorthosite figure 3 shows sections showing the occurrence of economic minerals in the bushwell complex in the stratigraphic column several litho units occur at different levels bronzeite and feldspathic layers are frequently encountered in the lower and critical zones at several levels according to cameroon 1978 layering exhibited by the litho units may be relatively inconspicuous or dramatic layering may occur on a scale of tens to hundreds of meters or on a scale of millimeters and centimeters and it may yield knife sharp millimeter wide contacts or gradational ones typically over several centimeters or tens of centimeters layering is best developed in the critical zone economic significance of the ore bearing layers seems chromite bushwell layered complex contains about 75% of the world's chromium reserves the eastern lobe of the intrusion contains more than 30 chromatite layers or groups of layers of which the following account for bulk of the chromite excavated 
எல்ஜி சிக்ஸ் ஸ்டீல் போர்ட் மெயின் குரோமைட் சீம் எஸ்எம்எஸ் லீடர் குரோமைட் சீம் டூ மீட்டர் அபோ எஸ்எம்எஸ் யூஜி ஒன் டுவாஸ் ரிவியர் சீம்ஸ் சிக்ஸ் தேர்ட்டி செவன் மீட்டர் அபோ எஸ்எம்எஸ் யூஜி டூ குரோமைட் சீம் எயிட் சிக்ஸ்டி ஃபோர் மீட்டர்ஸ் அபோ எஸ்எம்எஸ் அண்ட் மெரின்ஸ்கி ரீஃப் நைன் செவன்டி ஃபோர் மீட்டர்ஸ் அபோ எஸ்எம்எஸ் ஆல் த சீம்ஸ் ஆர் கன்ஃபைன் டு த கிரிட்டிகல் ஜோன்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஸ்ட்ராட்டிஃபைட் காம்ப்ளெக்ஸ் SMS is 110 plus or minus 8 cm thick and extends along the strike for more than 65 km. It is also nearly constant in composition and contains world's best chemical grade chromite reserves. The leader seam in 47 plus or minus 8 cm thick and also constant in composition. UG2 chromite seam and Merinsky reef are equally prominent in the western lobe of the layered complex. The northern lobe of the complex consists of flat reef chromite seam area the chromite layers are composed of cumulus chromite grains and range in thickness from a few millimeter to more than 100 cm the observed rhythmic layers suggest that each unit resulted from the influx of new magma pulse which formed a layer at the base of the magma chamber where it cooled and precipitated a mineral or mineral phases until its reduced density permitted mixing with the overlying magma The precipitated crystals are thought to have nucleated and grown in situ on the floors and walls of the chamber according to Wilson 1989. Platinum. The Bushwell complex is bestowed with large reserves of platinoid ores. 60,400 tons of platinum group metals composed of platinum, palladium, rhodium, ruthenium, iridium and osmium and the average ore grade is 8.27 ppm. In the eastern and western lobes of the layered complex the platinoid ores are confined to Merinsky reef and UG2 chromatite layer In the eastern lobe of the Merinsky reef can be traced in outcrop for 250 km and has a thickness of 0.3 to 0.6 cm Chromite bands approximately 1 cm thick mark the top and bottom of the reef and the chromite layers are equally enriched with platinoid metals In the chromite layers and the reef sandwiched between them platinoid ores along with nickel and copper bearing sulfides contain spirillite platinum arsenic braggite platinum palladium nickel and sulfide stibio palladinite palladium antimony laurite ruthenium sulfide chalcopyrite pyrrhotite with high platinum pentlandite with high palladium rhodium nickeliferous pyrite with all platinum group metals cubanite millerite and wilerite together with some native platinum and gold in the ores platinoid metal minerals contribute about 40% of platinum group metals values and the remaining 60% of these values occur in solid solution in the base metal sulfides the merinsky reef along with the underlying and overlying 1 cm thick chromatite layers contain 33 by 109 tons of exploitable ore having 7.5 to 11 ppm platinum group metals 0.18% nickel and 0.11% copper the ug2 chromite layer lies 150 to 300 meters below the merinsky reef it is 60 to 250 meters thick and occurs within a bronzeite cumulate that overlies a zone of bronzeite plagioclase pegmatite the ug2 chromite layer carries 3.5 to 19 ppm platinum together with copper and nickel values its reserves exceed 5.42 by 109 tons the ug2 chromite layer consists of 60 to 90 volume percent chromite 5 to 25 volume percent bronzeite and 5 to 15 percent volume percent plagioclase with accessory clinopyroxene base metal sulfide platinum group metal minerals ilimnite magnetite rutile and biotite The platinum reef in the northern lobe is 200 meters thick with rich mineralization of thickness more than 6 to 45 meters. Ore grade ranges from 7 to 27 ppm total platinum group metals. Ore reserves are about 4.08 by 109 tons. The genesis of the platinum rich layers in the Bushwell complex is still debated. The mystery centers on why the platinum group of metals and the associated sulfides are concentrated just in a few thin layers. There is a strong correlation between platinum group metals and sulfur contents in these layers supporting the idea that sulfides acted as collectors scavenging the platinum group metals from the silicate magma Many ingenious hypotheses for the platinum concentrations have been put forward According to Nolrett 1983 
who proposed a convincing hypothesis that unusual magnetic events caused sulfide droplets to come in contact with large volumes of turbulent convecting magma, allowing them to scavenge much platinum group metals from the magma. When cooling resulted in laminar flow, the sulfides and suspended crystals sunk to form a cumulate layer, magnetite. Another significant resource of the Bushwell complex is the layered magnetite-rich units in the main and upper zones of the layered complex. Monomineralic rocks near the magnetite layers include anorthosite and pyrozinite and all three of these occur as specialized layers within dioritic, gabbroic and noritic units. More than 30 magnetite layers of thickness ranging from a few centimeters to several meters have been identified in the uppermost 2 km of the layered sequence of the eastern lobe. There is extraordinary lateral persistence of even the thinnest millimeter scale magnetite layers. Most of the magnetite layers have sharp lower and gradational upper contacts, but all combinations of sharp and gradational have been observed. The magnetite layers consist of 80 to 98 percent magnetite, 1 to 10 percent exsolved granular ilimnite, less than 1 percent sulfides, with the remaining composed mostly of the plagioclase and lesser pyroxene. The magnetite contains a few percent titanium and 0 to 2 percent vanadium oxide. In the magnetite layers, titanium content increases upward and the vanadium oxide content decreases steadily upwards. Magnetite ores are utilized for production of vanadium also. The exact mechanism by which the titanium and vanadium bearing magnetite layers formed is still uncertain. It is generally considered that the precipitation of copious amounts of titaniferous magnetite was triggered by episodic increase in oxygen fugacity but the exact process giving rise to such increases is still uncertain. According to Reynolds, 1985, in the Bushwell complex, a complex interplay of factors resulted in copious titanium vanadium magnetite precipitation. The factors included concentration of iron, titanium and vanadium in the residual magma and large-scale in-situ bottom crystallization of plagioclase with the development of a layer of stagnant magma above from which the magnetite crystallized as well as changes in oxygen fugacity, temperature and ratio of fugacity of water to fugacity of hydrogen occurred. Great Dyke, Zimbabwe The Great Dyke of Zimbabwe is a layered igneous intrusion, 532 km long, 5 to 9.5 km wide and consists of four narrow layered complexes. In cross-section of the mineral layers or synclinal chromate layers that occur along the entire length and the individual layers extend across the entire width as shown in figure 4. Figure 4 shows sketch diagrams illustrating the Great Dyke of Zimbabwe and the occurrence of chromatite layers in it, in part after Bishan, 1969. The chromite layers are in the range of 5 to 100 cm and nearly all the chromite is of metallurgical and chemical grade. Only layers of more than 15 cm thick are mined. The Great Dyke has an estimated reserve of 10,000 million tons of chromite in as many as 11 persistent main seams. Sudbury Complex, Ontario, Canada The Sudbury Complex is a unique crustal feature of the Canadian Shield. Economic Significance It has been the world's most productive nickel deposit and yielded more than 8 million tons of nickel about the same amount of copper and minor quantities of the platinum group of metals, cobalt, iron, sulphur, gold, silver, selenium and tellurium. The grade of ores worked in the past was about 3.5% nickel and 2% copper. Today, with large-scale mining methods, the grade worked is around 1% for both the metals. Geological Setting and Genesis the Sudbury complex has been the center of many geological controversies. Debate now centers largely upon whether or not magmatic activity was triggered by a meteorite colliding with the Precambrian surface. Shock metamorphic features including shatter cones are common in the rocks around the complex for as much as 10 km from the footfall of the layered complex. This feature favors the meteorite impact hypothesis for the eruption of magma. The Sudbury Basin is elliptically shaped and is about 60 by 27 km as shown in figure 5 and its most obvious feature is the Sudbury Igneous Complex. 
1849 million years which consists of a lower zone of augite norite a thin middle zone of quartz gabbro and an upper zone of granophyres according to co and crockett 1979 these three rock units are comagmatic the complex is believed to have the shape of a deformed funnel the northern contact of the complex dips about 41 degree south and the southern contact dips 65 degree north at the base of the norite there is a discontinuous zone of inclusion and sulfide rich norite and gabbro known as the sublayer in the so called offsets steep to vertical radial and concentric dikes that appear to penetrate downward into the foot wall from the base of the complex the inclusion rich sulfide bearing rock is quartz diorite the sublayer and offsets are at present the world's richest source of nickel as well as an important source of copper cobalt iron platinum and 11 other elements there are more than 48 mines in the ore bearing sublayers and offshoots inside the complex is the white water group consisting of a volcanoclastic like sequence onaping formations a manganese rich slate sequence anvatin formation and a carbonaceous and arenaceous proximal turbidite kemsford formation as indicated in figure 5 figure 5 shows geological map of the sudbury district after soch et al 1969 and brocom and dalziel 1974 most of the ore bodies occur in the sublayer inclusion and sulfide rich norite and gabbro whose magma was rich in sulfides with inclusions and peridotite pyrozinite and gabbro in some places the sublayer appears to be older than the main mass of the complex and in other places the sublayer appears to be younger and presumably intruded along the foot wall of the main mass it appears to have acquired its high content of inclusions during its passage through an underlying hidden basic igneous complex the sulfides tended to sink into synclinal embayments in the foot wall figure 6 shows generalized section through the craton ore zone looking west after such et al 1969 craton ore zone the craton ore zone has the greatest number of ore varieties as shown in figure 6 the hanging wall of quartz norite above the sublayer occasionally contains enough interstitial sulfides to form low grade ore in the upper part of the sublayer rag disseminated sulfide ore occurs consisting of closely packed inclusions several millimeters to 10 cm in size in a matrix of sulfides and subordinate norite the sulfide content increases downwards as also the ratio of matrix sulfides plus norite to inclusion with a concomitant increase in inclusion size up to 1 meter resulting in an ore called gabbro peridotite inclusion sulfide the ore changes towards the foot wall into massive sulfide ore containing fragments of foot wall rocks it is called inclusion massive sulfide ore and it is discontinuous and also form stringers and pots in the foot wall all ore types contain dominantly of pyrrhotite pentlandite and chalcopyrite with minor amounts of pyrite cubanite although cubanite exceeds chalcopyrite in places in massive ores magnetite occurs as accessory mineral figure 7 shows generalized section through the fruit ore body looking southwest after such et al 1969 fruit stobi ore body the fruit stobi ore body is an example of an ore body in an offset dike as shown in figure 7 this parallels the foot walls of the complex it is a huge ore body 1.3 km long 1 km deep and nearly 300 m across at its widest point it consists of a wedge shaped body of inclusion bearing quartz norite with disseminated sulfide partially covered by inclusion massive sulfide in the lower half immiscible silicate sulfide ore occurs as shown in figure 8 Figure eight shows a tracing of an ore specimen from Sudbury, Ontario. Sulfides, mainly pyrrhotite with minor pentlandite and chalcopyrite, are shown in white. Surrounding silicates are shown grey. Note the rounded, discontinuous nature of the sulfide globules. They appear to have formed as a result of liquid immiscibility from a silicate sulfide melt. Note especially the rounded silicate blips. within the sulfide bodies and that many of the sulfide globules appear to have formed from the coalescence of smaller bodies of sulfide liquid 
this ore type grades into massive ore outwards and downwards inclusions in the quartz diorite vary from a few centimeters to many meters in length the largest inclusion found was one of peridotite that was 45 meters long sudbury complex is also considered as an example of ore bearing layered igneous complexes for example bushwell complex but the observed presence of dike like offset ore bodies of the sudbury complex and the non sulfidic fragmented rock components in the inclusion sulfide ores are unique features not reported from other layered complexes the observed unique features of the sudbury complex may have to be attributed to violent injection of ore bearing magma as a consequence of suspected meteoric impact norilsk talnak region russia Ore bearing gabbroic intrusion of the Norilsk Talnak region, Siberia, belongs to the category of flood basalt related basic intrusives of rifted cratonic zones. Geological setting: the country rocks of the Norilsk Talnak region, as shown in Figure 9, are carbonates and argillaceous sediments of the early and middle Paleozoic, overlain by carboniferous rocks with coals, Permian, and a Triassic volcanic sequence. the associated gabbroic intrusions form sheets irregular masses and trough shaped intrusives figure 9 shows geology of the norils talnak region for location c figure 7.7 after nalred 1981 mode of formation of ore deposits the norils deposit occurs in the differentiated layered dominantly gabbroic intrusion which extends for 12 km and is 30 to 350 m thick in cross section it is lensoid with steep sides as shown in figure 10 the copper nickel sulfides form breccia and disseminated and massive ores at the base of the intrusion and vein ore bodies developed in the footwall rocks and the basal portion of the intrusion ores contain pyrite chalcopyrite pyrrhotite and pentlandite and are characterized by high copper nickel ratio The copper nickel sulfide ores of the Norils Talnak region contain significant amounts of platinum group metals average grade 3.8 ppm and the known reserves of the sulfide ore contains 6200 tons of platinum group metals figure 10 shows a cross section through the Norils 1 deposit after Glaswowski et al 1977 Eastern Goldfields province Kilgrain Craton Western Australia Eastern Goldfields province is bestowed with several occurrences of artho magmatic copper nickel sulfide deposits including the ones at Mount Keith Perseverance Mount Clifford Windara Scotia Kambalda and Vijimulta as shown in figure 11 Figure 11 shows a generalized geological map of the Eastern Goldfields province of the Ilgan block showing some of the important nickel deposits modified from g 1975 geological setting these deposits are associated with comatitic suit of lava flows and related shallow dike like or sill like dunitic intrusions comatiites are both extrusive and intrusive and the comatitic lavas are the extrusive equivalents of peridotites hasbergites and even dunites Ultramafic members of the comatitic lava are believed to have crystallized from liquid with up to 35 weight percent magnesium oxide and carrying 20 to 30% of olivine phenocris in suspension. It is also believed that the comatitic lava flows at the time of eruption carry immiscible droplets of iron nickel copper sulfides. In some flows near surface sills quench textures are present in the upper part. Quench textures also known as spinifex textures result from the intergrowth and interpenetration of long skeletal quench crystals of olivine and pyroxene which resemble a mat of an australian grass called spinifex grass spinifex texture of the comatitic lava flows is attributed to rapid cooling of the lava shallowly intruded magma aided by sea water types of copper nickel sulfide deposits Copper nickel sulfide deposits of the Eastern Goldfields province as shown in figure 11 are classified into two main types according to Groves and Leisher 1982 The first type consists of segregations of massive and disseminated ores at the base of lens like comatitic peridotic or dunitic flows or subvolcanic sills at the bottom of thick sequences of comatitic flows 
For example, copper nickel iron sulphide deposits at Kambalda, Windara and Scotia, which are termed volcanic type deposits. The second type, dike like or sill like deposits, occur in largely concordant but partially discordant dunitic intrusions emplaced in narrow zones up to several hundred kilometers in length. For example, copper nickel iron sulphide deposits at Perseverance and Mount Keith. These deposits occur in the 800 km long Northman Viluna greenstone belt, which was interpreted by Groves et al. 1984 as a rift zone of 200 km width. This belt consists of rocks belonging to two ultramafic to felsic volcanic cycles. All the important known copper nickel deposits are confined to the ultramafic rocks of the lower cycle, which is about 2700 million years old. The classification of the copper nickel iron sulphide deposits of the eastern goldfields province into volcanic type, extrusive type and dike like intrusive type deposits, Groves and Leisure 1982 may not be valid. Donaldson et al. 1986 provided field evidences to suggest that there is a complete continuum between the dunite hosted intrusive ores and the comatitic lava hosted deposits. The observation is strongly supported by the work of Bonds and Bonds 1990, who contend that actually these dunite intrusives are coarse grain, olivine ad cumulates, which formed in long lived comatitic lava rivers that overflowed periodically to form the flanking sequences of orthocumulates and spinifex textured flows. Figure 12 shows typical sections through two nickel sulphide ore bodies associated with Archean class 1. 2. Ultra basic bodies. The Alexo mine is 40 km east northeast of Timmins, Ontario after Nalred 1973. Mode of occurrence and genesis of copper nickel sulphide deposits. Copper nickel iron sulphide mineralization at Kambalda is associated with comatitic lava flows and is encountered at or near the base of the flow or sill suggesting gravitational settling of a sulphide liquid as shown in figure 12. The mineralized zone exhibits the following features which are similar to comatitic related sulphide ores elsewhere for example Alexo mine near Timmins, Ontario, Canada. Massive ore at the base. The banding in the Lunan ore body of Kambalda region is probably the result of metamorphism. A sharp contact between the massive ore and overlying disseminated ore which consists of net textured sulphides in peridotite. Another sharp contact between the net textured ore and the weak mineralization above it which grades up into peridotite with very low sulphur content. The sulphide ore is made up of cobaltiferous pyrite, pyrhotite, chalcopyrite, and pentlandite and the ore bodies are confined to former topographical depressions beneath the ultramafic lava flows. Some of these depressions appear to be fault related while others may be thermal erosion channels formed by the exceptionally hot and very fluid lavas. The depressions are narrow and elongate with length to width ratios of about 10 is to 1 and are few meters to 100 meter deep. Ore bodies may have formed in these depressions not just by simple sinking of sulphide droplets from a static silicate liquid but also by a riffling process as the main lava stream moved for some time over these footwall embayments. At Kambalda, post-consolidation metamorphism thickened some ore bodies and mobilized some into falls and along previously barren contacts but created no new sulphides. The dike-like or sill-like, for example, deposit at Perseverance. Deposits contain higher concentration of sulphides. They occur in long dunite dikes or sills and these bodies bulge out to thickness of several hundred meters. For example, at Perseverance deposit, the host dike thickens from a few meters to 700 meters as shown in figure 13. Figure 13 shows generalized geology of the Perseverance deposit. Many faults have been omitted. Modified from Martin and All Church 1975. The ore bodies generally appear to be associated with areas of considerable serpentinization during which enrichment of the ores seems to have occurred. The ores are dominantly of disseminated type, though some massive sulphides occur at perseverance. 
mineralogical composition of the nickel copper sulfide ores of the deposits at perseverance is similar to those of comatiites hosted sulfidic ores at kambalda summary and conclusions ore deposits formed during fractional crystallization of magmas are designated as magmatic segregation deposits also known as orthomagmatic deposits these deposits are the direct crystallization products of magma usually form in the magma chamber and thus constitute deep seated intrusive bodies however differentiated or immiscible melts and crystal meshes can be driven into walls or roofs of the magma chamber to form ore bodies in the form of dikes sills and even extrusive flows a magmatic segregation deposit may constitute an entire intrusive body form a single compositional layer within the igneous rock body or occur as disseminated minerals orthomagmatic deposits of chromium platinum titanium iron and chromium nickel iron less platinum are associated with basic and ultra basic rocks emplaced in cratonic and active orogenic settings the world's major orthomagmatic deposits are associated with layered igneous intrusives bushveld great dyke and sudbury intrusions related to flood basalts of cratonic areas norils talnac and bodies emplaced in active orogenic areas eastern goldfield province bushveld layered complex contains about 75% of the world's chromium reserves the bushveld complex is bestowed with large reserves of platinoid ores composed of platinum palladium rhodium ruthenium iridium osmium and the average ore grade is 8.27 ppm another significant resource of bushwell complex is the layered magnetite rich units associated with titanium and vanadium the great dike of zimbabwe is a layered igneous intrusion 532 km long 5 to 9.5 km wide and consists of chromite layers that occur along the entire length and the individual layers extend across the entire width the sudbury basin is about 60 by 27 km shock metamorphic features favors a meteorite impact hypothesis for the eruption of magma sudbury igneous complex 1849 million years consists of a lower zone of augite norite a thin middle zone of quartz gabbro and an upper zone of granophyres and these three rock units are reported to be co-magmatic in steep to vertical radial and concentric dikes that appear to penetrate downward into the foot wall from the base of the complex and referred to as offsets the inclusion rich sulfide bearing rock is quartz diorite most of the ore bodies occur in the sublayer inclusion and sulfide rich norite and gabbro whose magma was rich in sulfides with inclusions and peridotite pyrozinite and gabbro the sublayer and offsets are at present the world's richest source of nickel as well as an important source of copper cobalt iron platinum and 11 other elements norils deposit russia occurs in the differentiated layered dominantly gabbroic intrusion the copper nickel sulfides form breccia and disseminated and massive ores at the base of the intrusion and vein ore bodies developed in the foot wall rocks and the basal portion of the intrusion eastern goldfields province ilgrain craton western australia is bestowed with several occurrences of orthomagmatic copper nickel sulfide deposits associated with comatitic suit of lava flows and related shallow dike like or sill like dunitic intrusions